Hello, my name is Alan Derringer, uh, Director of Maintenance for Mesilla Valley Transportation. Today I'm over here at Border International, standing in front of one of the International LTs equipped with 6x2 configuration, diff lock feature. Um, MVT runs 1,350 of these. We've been running them for the last 12 years with much success. Low cost on, on, on maintenance with this setup and just a very good truck. Drivers, we're in the cab of uh, International LT over the road tractor. Uh, we are going to go over the switch panel, which is below the radio. And we're going to talk about the differential lock switch. We're going to talk about the off-road switch and also the suspension dump switch, with, which is actually inactive in these tractors, and I'll, I'll explain why here shortly. But to the far left, we have the diff lock switch. I will turn that on for you. There's a green light illuminated, okay, and that is going to be an indicator as you're going up a hill. Once you turn that switch on, this is snowy, icy conditions if you need added traction. If you actually see a light come on in the dash, which is your traction control light, it will say TC, a T with a slash and a C below it. That has given us an indication it's very slick. We have had a tire spin situation that will be on the forward axle. So that means we need to slow up a bit, and I recommend slow down to 25 or below. The switch or the differential lock feature is only active below 25 miles an hour. So hit the switch. The switch will actually stay in a illuminated position. The green light will be on. There will also be a light configuration on the left side of your main instrument panel. It's, a, it's an X with two tires showing that also shows that it's locked up. Okay, this is good up until 25 miles an hour. Now, if, if you're going, if you exceed 25 miles an hour, you're gonna start seeing the green light in the diff lock switch blink, and you will also see the other icon on the main instrument cluster, it will also blink. This is an indicator that the diff lock switch actually canceled itself. Can't run it more than 25 miles an hour. Reason being, we have all the weight within the box, whether you have 34,000 pounds on the dry position, it's all on one position now, which gives you the added traction along with the positive traction. Okay. so. If you actually have everything blink at you going above 25 miles an hour and you feel that you need traction once again, slow down to about 24 miles an hour. You will have to rock the differential lock switch back off and turn it back on. That will reinitiate the process, lock everything up. It will exhaust the air out of the very back airbags on the third axle, give you that ultimate traction. Okay, moving to the right of the diff lock switch, we have a switch called the off road switch that is not to be used on highway. That is only for off-road as it is labeled off-road. So if you're, in a, if you're in a situation and you have to pull into a parking lot, the shipper or the receiver asks you to pull over to Dock C and it's a parking lot with, 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 with holes or mud or sand or unstable conditions, be proactive, initiate the diff lock switch and the off-road switch, okay? That gives you the ultimate traction, gives everything as it did on the highway, but you also have the off-road switch and that what that does that cancels the ABS and gives you control over forward momentum it gives you a little bit of if you need to rev the tires up a little bit to get through the sand you can actually do it if if the off-road switch was off and if you gave it throttle it detects a wheel spin and it takes your throttle away so it kind of leaves you as a sitting duck so always initiate off-road and diff lock switch at the same time if you are off-road and if you're in the situation where you have poor traction, mud, which you shouldn't be in the mud anyway. Always make that decision, drivers. Make sure that the, the area that you're gonna enter is not grass, it's not too muddy. Always make that, make that decision before you get into trouble and be proactive. To the far right, we have another switch called the suspension dump valve. That has been disabled. That actually dumps all the bags at one time, okay? That was meant to get onto trailers that are dolly too low or if your fifth wheel's too high, that dumps everything we have disabled that we have had too many of what i call a high pin incidents where you driver undershoots that pin hits the cab or the fairings on the front wall of the trailer and causes damages so if you get to that situation where you need to lower the truck actually hit the diff lock switch it will not lower the truck much but put your fifth wheel gently against the trailer apron and give it Give it a little push and it will go up under the trailer very easily. The back bags will be deflated. It will have a rocking motion and just push you under the trailer very gently. We are now outside the truck of the International LT over the road tractor. And we'd like to demonstrate, live demonstration on what actually takes place on the six by two tractor. Okay, as mentioned before, six by two, six wheel positions, only two are driven, steer axle, this is your drive axle. Right now we have the drive axle jacked up off the ground, one position only. 
I can turn that because the differential right now is open. Tires on the other side are on the ground, open differential, that's how most trucks are configured. This one has a differential lock, okay? I can easily turn that. Back axle is merely your tag axle, okay? Straight beam, tires, wheels, weight supporting axle, I can also turn this. This one never locks up, it's a free roller, just like a trailer axle, weight supporting only, okay? When I come to the front and I want added traction, whether it be off-road, uneven parking lot, or if we're in adverse conditions, going up a hill, rain, snow. Remember, below 25 miles an hour, this is active. So we're gonna engage the diff lock. I'm gonna rock it a little bit. And if you notice, it just locked up. I can't turn it anymore. It is actually coupled to that driver, which that drive position, which is called Positrack. Cannot turn it, okay? I can still turn this one. That means we're coupled it up up there, really, really driven. If you come back here, we have, a different, we have an actual dump valve switch and it just exhausted all the air out of these bags. Notice how they're flat, very soft. The forward axle bags are still in the fully inflated position. That means the weight of this trailer, or even bobtail, all the weight is on the forward axle. So we have positive track, twin drive, and all the weight on the forward axle. The back axle is just back here, and that's about it. Great traction, should be able to use it off-road, on highway, use it a lot. Once there is no more need for the diff lock, or if you exceed 25 miles an hour going up a hill, your differential lock system is gonna automatically take off. Or if you turn it off, here's what's gonna happen. Right now, I can't turn it. It just turned off, now I can turn the wheel again. Again, we have an open differential, okay? Standard position, and if you could actually hear the airbags now airing back up, the back axle comes into effect. They're solid, it takes 20 seconds there and back up. Now you're back in the standard position, continuing down the highway. Drivers, we're gonna to demonstrate today how to properly come out from under a trailer. First of all, we're gonna do it wrong, okay? I know there is a switch in the cab and I've heard many complaints about it. Why isn't the four bag dump valve operational? We, dis we dis disabled that switch so we don't have problems with the truck being too low, coming up under an apron and high keying pinning the fifth wheel so it doesn't work okay so we're gonna we're gonna show how it comes out from under a trailer how many drivers do this we're gonna show it the wrong way at first what I'm gonna do traditionally you'll come down in high speed and you'll stop you don't want to injure yourself and then you'll go to the low speed position which is in and I'm gonna give it one two three four five easy crank so I don't hurt myself okay then I'm gonna pull the pin the fifth wheel pin Of course, make sure the lines are disconnected, and then we're gonna pull out, we're gonna see what happens. Okay, you see how high that truck jumped up in the air? Okay, that is because we didn't have all four bags dropped, okay? Now we're gonna do it the proper way using a differential lock switch. Now we're gonna do the same motion using the differential lock switch, okay? I'm gonna come up to the trailer, I'm gonna lower it down as I did before. Make contact in high speed, low speed. Give it a few turns. Again, make sure we're disconnected on the lines. We get back up into the cab and now we're gonna hit the differential lock switch. And you could actually hear air exhausting. We have positive traction up here. We give it about, give it about a minute. And then we pull out easy. Watch what happens up here. Notice the truck didn't go up very much at all. And he could have waited a little bit longer and let, let even more out and just comes out flat. So very safe. Okay, we can do this in reverse also. We're gonna back up to a trailer. And we got a trailer that's a little bit too low. So hit the diff lock. And drivers, always make sure your plate hits the apron over here in the middle. Diff lock is on and it pushes the truck down real easy because we have exhausted airbags. I'd like to cover one more issue. We just hooked to a trailer, we're in a dirt parking lot and I've seen guys 
with the diff lock on, and this is a process of patience. You must release the trailer to make it go, okay? Drivers need to be more patient when they release the trailers to actually let the brakes release on the trailer, okay? I've seen them put it in gear, and they start to burn two holes in the ground, and they call themselves stuck. Well, they are stuck because they didn't take enough time for the brakes to release. So it's a little bit of patience. Make sure the brakes release, and it will pull out of a dirt lot very easy and out of, out of a dock situation. But gotta, you got to make sure the lines are hooked up properly and make sure there is time for to charge the air system on the trailer. Okay, drivers, I've been asked to come to this back parking lot of this facility, and it's dirt, okay? What I like to do is be proactive if I think it's unstable or uneven or we have a poor, poor traction condition. Before I even enter this parking lot, I'm going to initiate my differential lock. I will also turn the off-road switch on, okay? What I really like to do, I'll get out of my vehicle if, and park it safely, have my flashers on. I like to kind of walk around and survey the situation on foot, kind of look at it to make sure it's not soft, to make sure it's going to be passable by a big truck. If they ask me to back in over by those trailers, I, I will certainly take the time to get out to make sure everything's good to bring a, a large heavy vehicle onto. So I've initiated the diff lock, off-road switches on. I'm going to proceed slowly. I've already looked around. Everything looks good. I'm going to back up over into one of these parking lots. And this differential lock feature is going to tremendously help us out. If there's many potholes, this isn't too bad. But I see some soft dirt over here on the side. Okay, so we're, we're going to come in here very slowly. And we're going, to, we're going to back up into this lane over here. And as you can see, there's already some spots where where, where drivers have had some trouble and maybe did not use their differential lock and they've dug holes in the ground right in front of the traders over here. Well, we're going to pull up, we're going to back up into this slot right here. Diff lock is active, off-road switch is on. That gives me the ability to, to have control of my tires and ABS doesn't take over and take my throttle away. So very easy. As we back up, we're gonna we're gonna sound the horn, and I usually get out, um, survey the area. We know it's clear, and we're gonna back up slowly. Again, we have no spin issues. The traction control, or, or I should say, the diff lock is engaged, and we're just going back up over here, and everything looks good. Good traction. We're clear. Clear to back up. Again, drivers use this feature: the off-road switch, the diff lock. Use it religiously, um, do it uh, on your pre-trip, and, and ju just get used to doing it and get very familiar with it. Okay, drivers, we're going to demonstrate the differential mode on the highway. I've mentioned before that it cuts out at 25 miles an hour, which is a good thing. We don't want to be going over 25 if we're fully loaded with 45,000 pounds of beer in the box. That's too much weight on one axle. As we know, the, the, the rear axle or the third axle deflates when the diff, diff lock switch is uh, initiated. So we're going we're gonna to initiate the diff lock. We can do it while we're rolling. The green light is not blinking, and our icon on the main cluster is illuminated. So we're going we're gonna to roll up. Let's just say it's a little icy out here, a little adverse weather conditions, and we're taking off easy. But we're going to watch closely on the speedometer. Okay, we're up to about 15, 20 miles an hour. As mentioned before, at 25, it disengages, okay? Airs up the tag axle, opens the diff back up. At 25, which is right there, there was a beeping sound, and now we have a flashing light on the diff lock switch itself, and we also have no icon on the main cluster. All right, if I want to initiate it again, I will get off the throttle. It will not automatically go back into play. You have to rock the switch off, put off the throttle, rock it back on. Solid green light, we're locked back up into diff lock. We are below 25 miles an hour. I'm going to slow up a little bit here at the stop sign. And we're going to demonstrate it one more time. There we go. I'm going to get going. We take off easy. We're going to get rolling. Diff lock is fully engaged right now. Both tires are married together as a positive track unit. Light is solid. At 25 miles an hour, we're going to hear an audible beep. There it is. Light is blinking, the icon on the dash has turned off. We are back to normal operation. All airbags are aired up. Diff lock is no longer in use. I will turn the switch off. 
Okay, we're going to attempt to back up a very steep incline at this border body shop over here. I suggest you use the differential lock. I will engage it. Green light is active. Icon on the main dash cluster is locked up, looks good. Brakes released, we put it in reverse. And it's a very steep incline. Uh, the bags have deflated on the very back axle, the tag axle. This should give us ultimate traction and we should be able to back up this very steep incline rather easy. Without the diff block engaged and the back air airbags fully inflated, you'll, you will get a wheel spin. So we're going to back up very slowly. I'm not giving it any throttle, it's slowly pulling up the grade. We're halfway up the grade, almost to the top, and we have not got a wheel spin yet. Have not given it a bit of throttle. All the way to the top on a very steep incline without a wheel spin whatsoever. Thank you for taking time to watch this video. For further information, please contact Border International.